So what is the importance of this particular conference, which is going to be the fifth yes. that you organize? And what are the issues, some of the issues that you're looking to have addressed? This conference, can, can you hear me or do I no, use the mic? No, no. Use the mic. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this conference, Lenora, and as you say, is the fifth in a, a series of conferences, national conferences of independence that we've organized <coughs> over the past 10 years or so. This one comes at a very particular time, and an important time, I think, for independent voters, broadly speaking, um, but for the independent movement and for our wing of the independent movement, which is as we often say, the, the progressive way of the independent movement. Independent voters are restless, um, and like much of America, they're also, I would say, confused and in some ways angry. In my opinion, there's not I wouldn't say that there is a, uh, a clear picture <laughs> of what it is that people are angry about. There's many problems in the society, many concerns having to do with everything from the very dramatic uh, decline in the quality of education, uh, the very serious problems that you know, which of course you deal with as an educator and a psychologist in the inner city communities relative to the, the so-called achievement gap and persistent poverty, et cetera, and so forth. Um, the economic situation in the country is obviously very unstable. Uh, we're having a recovery, uh, but it's a jobless recovery, uh, which might lead some people to question whether that's a recovery or not, but at least some people, the economists seem to think it's a recovery of sorts. Um, so there's a lot going on, a lot going on um, that is disturbing in, in many respects. Uh, I, I would even include some mention of the, the events in Tucson, and uh, but many things going on that, that are of concern. And, disturbing to people. I think that in, in some respects the, the crisis, if we can call it that, the political crisis in the country today, American people, generally speaking, and independents in particular, no longer trust the institutions to which we have turned traditionally to address and solve these kinds of problems. And I would say that um, I, there's, there's a lot of institutions on the list. <laughs> um, and I'm sure everyone in this room could speak volumes and very eloquently about various institutions that are failing our kids or our elderly or ourselves in one form or another. <coughs> but I think that in political terms, there is a, a, an overall sense that the institutions of political expression, which in this country are mainly the, the political parties, um, are failing at that. And so there's a lot of questions and concern and unrest about how to respond to that, what to do about that. And for a long time, independence, uh, you know, over the last 10 years, I'm talking about in contemporary history, um, independent voters as a whole have tended to, uh, while, they're, while remaining a very solid block in the electorate, and I, I know that most of you are familiar with these numbers, but there was a new poll that just came out that showed that uh, the percentage of Americans who are independents in the country today is 38%, as compared with 29% who consider themselves Republicans and 31% who consider themselves Democrats. So independents are the largest block of voters in the country. The least amount of access <laughs> and the least parity in terms of their political rights and their political participation. But, I th but what's happened 
more recently is that independents who have already made a statement that they're unhappy with the institutional framework that governs politics in this country, namely the political parties, and that's why they call themselves independents, have started to swing in ways that are dramatically impacting the outcome of elections. So as you know, in 2006, after uh, many years of a Republican-controlled Congress, independents swung strongly in support of Democratic candidates and gave control of Congress to the Democratic Party. In 2008, independents, as you mentioned in your remarks, independents were absolutely uh, fundamental to Barack Obama's victory, first in the Democratic Party primary over Hillary Clinton, and then in the general election over the Republican John McCain. Then two years later, unhappy, distrustful, angry um, about a whole set of things from the economic picture, which had gotten very, very dire, well, even before Obama took office, but surely much more so afterwards. And also, I think, in reaction to the very extreme partisanship that has existed and has been playing out in Congress and in other parts of other legislatures and other parts of the country, independents took another swing and voted with Republicans and gave the Republicans control of Congress in the last election. So, as is always the case in, in the political game, the powers that be only pay attention when power is involved. <laughs> uh, and I think that one of the things that is starting to happen now is that the whole question of who are the independent voters, what do they stand for, what do they really want, why are these people independents in the first place? That question is becoming more and more of a question in American politics. And so for those of us, like you and I, and many people in this room, and many people now across the country, you mentioned the 150 people who come on my conference call and who are working in 45 states around the country. For many of us, uh, the question becomes more urgently, how are we going to organize independent voters to be an active force in this country, to reform the political process, to change the institutions, the political institutions and the way they operate in such a way so that they're responsive to the people. Our conference is a discussion of all of that. <laughs> uh, we're going to um, have, I think, you know, uh, many hundreds of people from all across the country. And we're going to talk about these issues in, in, in some detail. We're going to talk about what's happened since Obama's election in the country, politically. We're going to talk about the rise of the right. We're going to talk about the Tea, the tea Party movement. We're going to talk about the increased polarization. We're going to talk about uh, the history of the independent movement and the role that we've played in trying to bring people together across the spectrum to bring about political change, structural change. Uh, and we're going to talk about that in, in a number of different formats with panels, and, and we're going to have a big audience discussion with an open mic, because we really want to give people from across the country the opportunity to raise questions and to talk about what they're doing, and so forth. We have a, um, a very distinguished and interesting cross-section of leaders who are coming to join us, who are, broadly speaking, part of the third force movement, independent politics in the broader sense, are going to be joining us. They're going to be part of a discussion about how to break open the system, but they're also coming to see us. They're coming to see you, and they're coming to see me, and they're coming to see all of you, because they want to know, well, what is this? We've been hearing about this independentvoting.org. We've been hearing about the fight for open primaries and for nonpartisan elections, and we've been hearing about the new coalitions and the new alliances that are being created by this force. We've got to get, a, we've got to get eyes on this thing. We've got to get in a room and see what this thing is really about, and who are these people, and what are their politics, and, and how they bring people from so many different communities and points along the political spectrum together. 
So it's going to be a, I think it's going to be an exciting event. You know, on, on a conference call that I did just the other night, I was talking to people around the country about the conference. And in my closing comments, I said, let me tell you what this thing is going to be like. No balloons, no confetti. This is going to be several hundred people in a room together for a bunch of hours having a serious discussion about the fate and future of our country and the role that we can play as activists and leaders in making a difference in where our country is headed. So that's a somewhat long answer to your, <laughs> very helpful. To your question. So what um, a number of people for